this is career fair training. It's not career services 101 or the basic interviewing skills. Now those two, the basic interviewing skills is the current iteration of Career Services 101, but those are the ones that you need to go to in order to be able to interview on campus or sign up for a mock interview. Essentially what they are is talking about basic interviewing skills. The reason why we want you to do this is, I say probably eight years ago, employers kept saying, your students have great experience but they don't come across in their interviews. They're not being specific enough. So that's one of the reasons why we required you to do that. You do not need to go to one of those in order to go to career fair, but if somebody asks you to stay for an interview or to show up for an interview the next day, you know, you may as well take it because that's, that's a requirement in order for you to be able to sign up. Okay, any, any questions about that? You only need to do it once. So how many of you took, took it when it was called Career Services 101? All right, you don't need to take it again. If you've already taken it once, that, that's all you need to do. These are just some examples of some of our services. If anybody took EDL 100 or any of the assessment tests, whoops, that's what we call our career exploration, career advising. If you are stuck in your internship search or your job search or you need somebody really to kind of sit down and talk to you about your interviewing skills, that's what career advising is. If you want somebody to strategize with you, because I think sometimes until you have an understanding of what it is to look for a job or to look for an internship, it's a little bit daunting. And the fact that you have to go through so many steps and you've got to follow up and you've got to do your research and you've got to contact people and you've got to, you've got to change your resume and you have to make sure that you practice for your interviewing, it, it can be a little bit um, cumbersome. So if you're feeling overwhelmed, come talk to us about it and we can help put it into perspective. 15 minute resume express, if you go on our website, you'll find the hours for that during the year and at the end of this, I'll show you the resume drop-in hours prior to career fair. Uh, so if you have not had anybody look at your resume, now's the chance for you to do it. And by the way, I will also be sending this PowerPoint to you and probably a couple other websites in the next couple of days, so don't worry if I seem to be going too fast. Mock interview service. Anybody done a mock interview with us? Okay, that's sort of a natural progression when you're going to be going to a career fair, um, you're going to be starting to look for an internship, you're going to be looking for a job. What's, what's the thing that many people are afraid of? Interviewing. And really, interviewing is practice. Once people do it a couple of times, you understand what it is to prepare, what kind of skills you want to talk about, and how you give examples. A lot of people think that I don't have any good examples. You know, yes, you do. Or people think I don't, I'm not in enough clubs because I am, anybody a student athlete here? Student athletes have to basically, that, that is their job. Or some students have to work 20 hours a week. You know, those are the kinds of things that you think I'm, I'm not worthy because it's not what most Miami students are. You have to learn how to talk about those, what the skills are that you've developed, what you've gotten out of it, and how those are transferable to the positions that you are applying for. Oh, whoops. Also, if you want to find out more about what our services are, the brochure that you got when you came in is a good start on that. These links are the ones that I showed you and are, as I said, that I think they're probably um, very, very useful to you when you're trying to figure out who you want to go see. Interview day at Millette is the day after. When you come to career fair, make sure that you have a, your calendar so you know what your schedule is the next day. So when they say, you know, because sometimes what they'll do is they'll say, hey, you know what? we'd like to invite you to an interview, or they may email you that night. But whichever way they do it, you want to be prepared. So you want to make sure that you have a resume, one that's been looked at, that you've attended the basic interviewing skills or the Career Services 101, you know your schedule, and if they ask you to fill out an online application, you want to make sure that you, you do so if you haven't already done it. Attire. I, this is not something that most Miami students have too much of a problem with. You seem to know what you should wear. Men, a suit or a sport coat and a tie. And then women, suit or blouse 
and you want to basically dress to impress. Now I know that I know that I'm a little old, but what about pantyhose for women? What do you think? Pantyhose, no pantyhose. What? You should wear pantyhose. Okay, now remember, this is not what you necessarily are going to be wearing when you, when you get the job. But if you don't want to wear pantyhose or, or tights or whatever, then please wear pants. But just, just remember that this is, this is not your usual day-to-day um, -day activity or your usual going uptown. If you look in the mirror, and I, I'm sorry to pick on you women, but if you look in the mirror and you go, boy, I'm going to wear this uptown the next time, you know, the next Saturday, you have got the wrong outfit on. You want to take it off and find something else. You laugh. There's always someone that I just want to go, okay, come here, please. Pull that up. Um, and make sure that your shoes are polished, and that's men and women, all right? It's those little details that sometimes students overlook. Avoid chewing gum. I chew it all the time, and it, it, it's, you know, you're going to chew it very fast the more nervous you are. No excessive jewelry. Um, if you wear cologne, go light or don't wear it at all because some people may actually be allergic to it. And then if you have a tattoo or excessive piercings, you might want to work on covering those up because I know that most, most students have a tattoo somewhere. Um, so. You n again, you never know. In some fields, it's probably not going to be an issue. If you're going to be working in some nonprofits, people wouldn't necessarily care. But if you're going to be going into um, a more established nonprofit or the business world or research, you know, they, they may have an issue. All right, dress conservatively and professionally. What do you think? Can you, do you think you can handle that, women? Yeah? Now, one thing that I do want to want to mention, watch your neckline, all right? You don't want to be the one like, oh, yeah, that one, oh, yeah. You know, she, she was the one with the low, with the cleavage showing. You don't want to be that. Even if, for the most part, you are going to be dressed more professionally and at a, at a higher business level, a higher level, I should say, than some of the recruiters. A lot of the recruiters come dressed in their, their company's shirts, their company's um, polos, etc. That's them. If you're not dressed appropriately, it will be noticed. Now, I don't mean there are some clothing manufacturers who um, would not have a problem if you came dressed in their clothing. But again, if you've got multiple multiple areas of, of jobs or internships that you're interested in, you want to make sure that you dress to, to fit the most um, conservative of those, shall we say. Again, it may not be something that you're going to do when you're dressed or when you actually work there, but for the, for the um, career fair, you want to dress conservatively. And men, you generally have a relatively easy time of it. You, know, you, you can wear a nice tie. Now women, I just want to I want to warn you. When you when there are 260 employers and you are walking around Millet, that floor gets hard. So wear comfortable shoes. If you do want to wear high heels, make sure they're comfortable because they will by the end of the day, you will be your feet will be hurting you. Okay, any any questions about about this or anybody have any Concerns about what to wear? As I said, most of you probably understand it. If you don't, have somebody look, have somebody kind of give you a critique. You know, is your hemline too short? Is, you know, is your, as I keep saying, your neckline too short? Um, or too low, rather. Because again, career fairs are all about first impressions. And you know what they say, you never get an opportunity to make a second first impression, is that what it says? It's something like that, you know, you know what I'm talking about. If you walk up and you're not dressed professionally, somebody will notice it. If your hair is not, not cut, uh, and I'm not looking at anybody, but you know, again, depending on who you're gonna go see, you wanna make sure that you know, your, your men, your, your, well, 
if you have a beard, that it's, it's um, trimmed properly. Um, if, you go, if you haven't had a haircut in a while, go get a haircut. Sorry, that's, that's just the way you have to do when you're doing this. So what do you want to bring? As this young man was talking about before, when you've done your research, you have an idea of the different companies you want to go see, and they may be three different areas. You can be generally specific, and by that I mean if you are interested, for example, in professional sales. It would be good enough to say that rather than be specific like professional sales with X, Y, and Z company. But let's say you were also interested in a management training program, and there are a lot of different management training programs that companies have. You know, that might be another objective, and that might be another way that you're going to customize your resume. You want to make sure that you have a notepad, paper, pencil. Um, if you have one of these <coughs> portfolios, and this is what I mean by portfolio, not, not if the one if you're an artist. But this is, this is good because you can take notes, because when you, after you've met with an employer, it's a good idea to kind of jot down a little bit about what you talked about. Um, this will be for your business cards. And if you jot down what you talked about, this is going to help you when you write your thank you notes. And we'll, and we'll talk about that later. And then also, if they have any good um, paraphernalia, you, know, you, you might want to, you can put some of it in here. So this, this is easily accessible. You, you can get this at, um, actually I got this from TQ, TQL, but you can get it in Shriver if you don't have one or borrow one. It just keeps things neat. All right, and a career fair cheat sheet. That's essentially who you're going to go see, where they're located. Remember, check our website later on this week to see where they're going to be located, what, what their table number is. And we we number them, we number them, and then there's also a poll with their name on it. So you want to know, number one, who am I going to go see, and what are the positions? Maybe some notes that you want to jot down about what the position is and what they're looking at, what they're looking for, and why you would be a good fit for that. So that's, that's what your cheat sheet is. Some people use the career fair booklet as their cheat sheet. Preparation, and th this really is key. I would suggest that you start preparing now, if you haven't already done so, and think about why do I want an internship or position in this field? Especially if it, it's not obvious on the surface from reading your resume why you might be interested in this. Do we have any arts and science majors? Okay, what's your major? Anthropology. What do you? What positions are you looking for? What? Who at Career Fair are you interested in? Um, like arts management. Arts management. All right. What else? Entertainment. Entertainment stuff. Okay. So those are two very different things. So when you are preparing for that, number one, as I and I'm going to say this many times, you do your research, find out what the positions are, and then tell me what you think are your. Um, Strengths or sellable skills? Um, I don't know. I have cu cultural perspective. Cultural perspective, all right. Um, it's hard, isn't it? Yeah. And that's why you need to think about it now. Now, let me read you something. This is from a consultant um, who did some work for career services. And the title is, Miami teaches the T-shaped skills employers need. These are what most employers want. And I want you to raise your hand. After I say it, I want you to raise your hand if you think you have it. Ability to work in a team structure. OK. Ability to verbally communicate with people in and out of the organization. OK. Ability to make decisions and solve problems. Ability to obtain and process information. Okay. Ability to plan, organize, and prioritize work. Ability to analyze quantitative data. Yeah, fewer of you, but yeah, I, I wouldn't be able to put mine up either. Technical knowledge related to the job. Okay. So in other words, in anthropology, you would have probably the technical skills that would be necessary for a museum curator. Proficiency with computer software programs. Okay. 
And that doesn't mean, you know, that doesn't mean you have to have the same kind of proficiency that um, somebody who is in a computer science major would have. Um, how many of you have good social media skills? And I don't mean you're on Facebook all the time, but you actually maybe have LinkedIn or you have a Twitter account that you use or you blog. Okay. You know, those are skills that you probably wouldn't think are marketable, but, but they are, especially to people that are my age. I get it, but I don't know how to put it together, and I need, I need people like you to help me. Ability to create and or edit written reports. Okay. Ability to sell or influence others. Okay. I would say that some of you are probably holding back, but these have nothing to do with, with what your major is, at least not, not necessarily. These are the skills that you get from the Miami plan, or at least that's, that's theoretically what this consultant decided. So when you're preparing, you know, what are, what are your career goals? What abilities or skills do you have to offer? And what I just read, there's a version of that in the book that you're going to get on Career Fair that talks about what, what um, skills that you would have from the Miami plan. Again, you want to think about that beforehand, because when I put this young woman on the spot, it really is hard. That's why when somebody says, tell me about yourself, and you haven't thought about it, you're probably going to say, well, I'm from Cleveland, your eyes are going to go up to the ceiling, and I'm going to know right away you have no clue what, what you were going to say to me, that, that you aren't prepared, um, like this young man apparently was when he first came. You don't even know who's there. So think about why do you want an internship or position in this field or with this company, and hopefully you're going to pick one of those that gives you a really good rundown, like these are the positions that we have, these are the internships we, we have, this is what we want. These are the kind of skills that we're looking for. And you think about, do you know what transferable skills are? If an organization says we want somebody who's got good time management skills or has the ability to um, communicate with our vendors all over the world, that means that, let's say, for example, you studied abroad. You know, that, that is something that is a transferable skill. Well, what, what kind of skills did, did you learn? You probably learned how to navigate talking to, um, you know, you, you're shaking your head. Did you study abroad? What do you think you learned? Um, well, I think I learned how to communicate, communicate with people from all over the world. Communicate with people from all over the world, yeah. all right. And find the common ground. Find the common ground, all right. Were you always with people from Miami? No, I, I didn't go to Miami. Oh, okay. So you, you actually were out of your comfort zone. Yeah. Okay. So that's, that's going to be transferable to you know, another job where you're either going to have to go to another country or another part of the United States. You know, you're used to dealing with people that you don't necessarily know. And those, those, that has helped you build some abilities and skills. And you want to talk about that. So what type of experiences are you seeking? Who, who can answer this question now? Why are you guys coming to Career Fair? Opportunity. Okay, what, what kind of opportunity? Um, experience. experience. You know what kind of a company you're interested in? Um, I have an idea. Yeah. What, what, can you tell me what it is? <laughs> um, specifically, um, I think it's business management. Business management, okay. <coughs> or what? Accountancy, all right. So you're an accounting major. Uh, economics. <laughs> economics, okay. All right. Okay. Anybody else? Anybody else have an idea of what, who exactly they're interested in or why you're going to go to career fair? Yes. interested in working for an insurance company where you can get some PR experience or corporate communication. Now, why insurance? Um, I, I did my last internship with an insurance company, and I okay. really liked the atmosphere. Okay. All right. Now, you prob some of you may not even think, when you, see, when you think of insurance, you probably think of door to door, and you don't really know the corporate structure. Um, is that what you did last summer, or is that what you did in your first one? Okay. All right. So now you want to change it a little bit. 
Okay, and there are gonna be a ton of insurance companies that are gonna be coming to Miami, so that, that will be good. And I think another thing that I wanna say is, don't stereotype what you may think about some companies like insurance or other kinds of consumer products. You know, you, it, we have this image in our mind about working for an insurance company or sales. <coughs> you know, sales doesn't necessarily mean going door to door. You know, there are all kinds of sales. So when you are interested in a company, take a look and see what it means for sales. For example, Target. You know, Target's got, and this, this isn't necessarily the sales part, but Target's got the store training program where you're in a store and the corporate. And so a lot of you are probably thinking when I say Target, oh, I don't want to be stuck in a store. Although it's, it's not a bad job and you probably would have a, a big territory. So there are opportunities in other parts of Target. Um, so again, you want to kind of keep an open mind. What do you most wish to learn? You know, what are you hoping, um, like this young woman said, she's hoping that um, working and doing different internships, she'll find what she wants to do. And it may not necessarily be, okay, I want to be this, but one thing that you can do when you're doing an internship or you're, or you're volunteering or whatever is you learn what you like and you learn what you're good at and you learn what maybe you don't necessarily want to do. So it doesn't necessarily, and what kind of skills do I want to use? What kind of a work environment do I want to be in? And where do you wish to work or intern? Okay, so creating a strategy. And it's gonna be even more important this year than ever before when we have those 260 employers in Millette and you don't know where anybody is. So that's why you wanna, you wanna think about that beforehand and do your research beforehand. You're going to have the website, which, which I showed you, and then you're also going to have the career fair book. But keep in mind, that career fair book is a couple weeks old. In order to get it printed, we have to, we know we have to do it. So. Uh, when you go to career fair, there is going to be an addendum to it, but what's online is the most accurate and the most up-to-date. Now, this is really important. Prioritize who you want to speak with. Okay? Anybody have, a, anybody have a, a plan or a method that they use when they work a career fair? Like if there's somebody that you really, really want to work for, you think you ought to go to them first? You know, some people, what do you think? Um, no, I think that, I'm not sure if you put them last, but don't put them first because um, you need to get, get a little practice and get your nerves up. Okay. Like people that aren't as important to you. Okay. And then go to the people that want to. Okay. So you've reviewed their websites. You've reviewed our website to find who's coming. You make a list, and I'm just throwing out eight to ten. You know, I would have the, these are my dream companies, you know, these are companies I'd be happy to go to, and, and I really don't know much about this company, but it looks kind of interesting, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it on my list. And some people would do what you're talking about, is like maybe go to one or two first just to practice, and then go to the ones that you're really interested in. Usually, Unfortunately, the ones you're really interested in, a lot of other people are interested in too. So there may be a big line. So you want to make sure that you are prepared for that big line. So, you know, unfortunately, there, there's not a lot you can do. That's why we're saying sometimes you're only going to get to see eight to ten organizations. But if you see that there's a company next door and you're kind of listening to what their recruiter is saying and they sound interesting, you know, don't be afraid to step outside of what your list is and see what some of those organizations are. Don't ignore smaller organizations or the names if you don't, if you've never heard of an organization before, you know, look, look at some of its information. You, you may be surprised. We've already talked about that before and how important it is to note where the organizations are and a lot for time, a lot for time excuse me, a lot time for waiting in line and for taking notes. And what I mean by that is, if you're gonna go to P&G or you're gonna go to the, the big four accounting firms or you're going to go um, to some of the more well-known companies, there's probably gonna be a line. You know, that, that's okay, that's, that's just the way it is and you can sometimes learn a lot by listening to what others say, listening to what their elevator spiels are. Because um, there are some people out there, some students in Miami, that are just wonderful. 
they're just fabulous with you know, how they introduce themselves. And you want to you take notes. Remember I was talking about you want to note the name of the, of the recruiter. Hopefully you'll have a card. If you talked about something in particular, write that down. You know, maybe they'll see on your, your resume that you're involved in a particular sport or that you are a musician and you, you talked about that. That's what you can use in your thank you letter afterwards. You can say, you know, I really enjoyed talking to you. Our conversation about you know, X, Y, and Z, um, or my trip to, to France, whatever, was, you know, was very interesting. All right. We're busiest between 3 to 5. The fair's from 2 to 6. So if you can get there at 2 o'clock, that's great, because you'll have an opportunity to, you know, the lines won't be as long. Now, the only problem with waiting until 5 o'clock and then coming is, if it's a company that, let's say for example, maybe a nonprofit or a company that may not have had a lot of people, they may, they may leave. So you're not going to have that problem with some of the bigger ones or the insurance companies, but if you can come early, that would be great. If not, then, you know, again, that's why you have a list and if somebody left, then you can just move on to the next person. I talked about this before too. Some employers want you to complete an application online especially if they're going to stay the next day and they want to invite you to an interview. And, you know, that's, that's just a part of what it is. So if you notice that there's a company that you're interested in and you notice through the information that they've, we've put on the website that they have an online application process and you have the time, it's well worth your time to go ahead and do it. Plus, as I said before, it's really kind of impressive if you said, you know, I'm, I'm interested in this particular position, I filled out your online application and then have some really good questions and some really good things to say. So. What do you say? Shake. First thing you do is you want to go up to, who feels comfortable with their elevator pitch? Anybody? Of course, nobody wants to admit it. Anybody? All right, then let's talk. Am I in the way? All right, then, then let's talk about um, shaking hands, OK? Who wants to come up and show me how to shake hands? Jake. <laughs> All right. Introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Jake. Okay. All right. Now, that's okay. You know, nice firm handshake. The thing that you do not want to do is this. You don't want this little thing like that. You know, when I was growing up, men were taught to shake women's hands like that because we're, you know, we're delicate, and you know, you, you can't. They don't want, we don't need to be hurt. But no, that, that's not the way you want to take your hand. Okay. All right. All right. So if you don't feel comfortable with your handshake, you don't want to break their hand either. But again, first impressions. First impressions. How you look, how you introduce yourself, how you shake hands. You know, it all gets noticed. So when, when you're introducing yourself, you want to give them your name, your year in school, what your major is, and give them a copy of your resume. Remember the customized resume, hopefully? And you do not need a cover letter, okay? So that should save you some time. I always say as, as when you're applying online or when you're applying in other types of ways, you do need a cover letter. But instead, think of your thank you letter as you know, a different version of your cover letter because it's, it's going to kind of summarize what you talked about and summarize why you are a good candidate. When I, when as an employer or a recruiter, when, when you give your elevator pitch to me or you introduce yourself, you tell me a little bit about yourself, you talk about what position that you're interested in and why you'd be a good candidate, I should be able to understand by the time you're done, and I know that's a lot of pressure in a very short period of time, you know, a little bit about who you are and I should be impressed with why you're a good candidate. Okay? That's hard to do. That's, that's why you want to practice. Whoops. Because you really only have one to three minutes to describe yourself, what your interests are, what some of your experiences are, what your skills are, and the opportunities that you seek within this organization. So, in a, yes? Um, quick question. How do you present your resume? Like, how do you say okay. Um, that's a good question. You know, you, you shake your hand, you introduce yourself, and you, you, you know, you have your resume in your hand and say, you know, here's a copy of my resume. Usually that they're going to ha have their hand out because that's, that's a part of what the, um, 
the game is, I guess you can say back and forth, you know, they're, they're going to take a moment to look at your resume or they're going to expect you to kind of walk them through it. So um, they're, it, it, they're not going to stand there and then look at you as you give them the resume. They're going to they're reach, reach their hand up, at least I hope. There, there are some people out there that might do that. Hang on one sec. All right. What to say. In the book that we're going to give you, there, is, there are some suggestions about questions that you might ask. For example, if they indicate there's going to be a training program, you, know, you might ask a little more details about the training program. You might ask you know, what kind of qualities. You know, I noticed that in your job description, you mentioned that you're looking for somebody with these skills. Um, are there anything else? Any other kind of skills that you think are important for somebody who's successful? Can you tell me a little bit about um, what this, this position requires in terms of travel? But again, you have to be sort of careful because if you're interested in traveling, then you might want to say something. You know, I, I notice there is travel and I'm very interested in that. Can you tell me a little bit more about what's, what's required? Again, you've thought about this beforehand. It may seem a little canned to you, but I'll tell you, it's much better that it seems a little canned than for you to go up there and kind of stammer around and, and hope that they're going to they're gonna help you out of it. Now, some employers are very warm. You know, they're very, you know, as soon as you come up, they'll, you know, their hands out for their resume. They're like, oh, it's very nice to meet you. Oh, I see that you're an anthropology major. So was I. And, you know, they're very conversational and, and you think you're talking to your best friend. And others will stand there. And, ascent, and I don't mean to scare you, and stand there and it's like, okay, what do you want? They won't say it that way, but it's going to be, hello, my name is, here's my resume. Silence. So that's why you've got to have that pitch. That's why you've got to you know, have an understanding of what they do, what you can do for them, and why you're a good candidate. So that if you get one of those, and it may be that they're doing it on purpose. You know, they're doing it because they want to see how you, how you react um, to this kind of a situation. Um, so be prepared for different, different kinds of responses. So, as I said, most of them are just really very nice and others of them, you know, they, they're a little bit intimidating. Unless they, unless they tell you, so ask, excuse me, you've given your pitch, you've asked questions, if they haven't told you what the next step is, you might want to ask them. Well, I'm very interested in this position. Can you tell me what the next step is? And they may say, well, you know, apply in line. Or, in fact, I'd like to invite you to the interviews tomorrow. Or, we're coming back in October and, you know, you need to go into Miami Career Link and sign up for an interview. Or, you know, put down that you're interested in that interview. Uh, get literature and request a business card because you're going to need that business card for your thank you notes. Now, I've been noticing in the past couple of career fairs that some recruiters say they don't have a business card. I'm not quite sure why. I don't know if it's because they don't want their mailbox flooded. Uh, but see if you can get their name and then hopefully they'll give you an email address too or you can look it up online, hopefully. Now with so many people who have LinkedIn accounts, you know, that, that might be a way for you to communicate with an employer who may not be particularly interested in, in giving you too much information. You want to make sure you thank the representative for his or her time. Yes? Do you, if they don't have a card, do you request to leave like, number? Yes. Yes. If they don't have a card, because sometimes they may legitimately have run out, you know, you can ask within, you know, what, what's the best way to get in touch with you, you know, what's your email address, et cetera. So yes, it's, it's perfectly acceptable to ask them. Uh, again, and I can't, I know that this seems like sometimes wasted time, but you want to take notes because, you know, the memory sometimes is not as good as you think. And if you're going to follow up with a thank you note, you want to make sure that the information in that is accurate. So body language, you know, going back to first impressions. Firm handshake, you know, good posture, you know, you're in your, your best professional attire. Maintain eye contact. Okay? That's very important. Not, you know, you know, looking like you're boring into them, but you know, main be natural, do eye contact, um, be as pleasant as possible. Smile, not maniacally, but you know, smile. Because we hope that this will be 
a pleasant exchange. For the most part, the employers that come here really want you to be successful. They are looking for the best talent. So they're, you know, if you're a good candidate, you've got some skills that they're looking for, you know, they may, you know, they're gonna try and get you to, you know, like their company um, and vice versa. So it's not just, it's kind of a two-way street. And, you know, it's not, this is not the end of the world. Be relaxed, you know, there will be other opportunities, but take advantage of this while you're here and, you know, see how it works out. So, follow up. Any of you heard of Suncor? Suncor? It's, a, it's a company in Australia. You have heard of Suncor? It's a company in Australia. Their president, I think, is a Miami grad. And did you do their internship this summer? Okay, all right, one of, their, one of their Skype interviews. One of the things that they said about you all was, Miami students write thank you notes. In Australia, they never send us thank you notes. They were so impressed with that. I mean, most of us have been taught by our, our parents that you, know, you send a thank you note. Now, handwritten, email, or letter, what do you think? Handwritten, okay. Email? Email? Okay, letter? Letter? You can. You can. Yeah, that, that is another way of doing it. Uh, my, my bottom line is just do something and do it quickly, like do it within 24 hours, maybe 48 at the latest. So if you do that email, in case, especially if they're gonna be making a decision quickly, you wanna, you know, sending that email will let them know. And believe me, employers know, they notice when you send them a thank you email, letter, card. This, and this is what I was talking about. Uh, make sure that you do it in a business format and if you wanna include something so that they would remember who you are, that's a good idea too, as well as maybe another copy of your resume. So you want to make sure that you do it as quickly as you can. Yes? Well, if you had a conversation with them about something or, or if you didn't, you know, I, I, I appreciated the time you took to tell me about this particular, this business analyst position, so they have maybe some frame of reference, if, if it's applicable. If the organization has given you any kind of direction, such as what I was talking about before, you need to go on our website and fill out the online application, make sure that you do it. And part of the reason why I said that you want to, you want to ask them if they don't tell you, what's the next step? When do you plan to interview on campus? So that you can, again, know if you need to send an email because they're going to make a decision quickly, or you, know, you, can, you can send a card and, and put it in snail mail. And then keep in contact. What's that mean? That means that if there's a mutual interest or you really are very impressed with the particular position in the company, you send them a thank you note, you know, and, and you have their business card and you, maybe you don't hear from them in a couple weeks, it's perfectly okay to send them an email or to, yeah, I would probably do this by email and say, you know, we met at Miami's career fair. I'm, I just wanted to let you know how interested I am in the position. Uh, I'm just checking in to see, you know, when, when you're going to make a decision about who to interview. Okay? Yes? I have a question about the, the handwritten notes. Yes. Uh, do you know their exact address that you've got to serve because they can send it to the corporation? Oh, they. How does that work? Are they going to find it? That's a good point. If you know their email address, but you don't know their, their mailing address, then send them an email. Otherwise, God knows what will happen to, to that card. You, you, know, you just don't know. Although you can also look online. You can also call, because if you have their business card and you have a number, you can call and say, you know, tell them your name. I'm, I'm, I would like to send a thank you note to so-and-so and so-and-so, but I don't have an address. What's the address that I should, I should do? I should send it to. Okay? All right. For some employers who find that they have a huge line, or some of them do this, I think, by just matter of, of preference, they'll conduct group interviews. Anybody ever been? Or group information sessions. That's, that's really tough to get, then get a business card, then follow up, because you're one of 
you know, many people. Um, you know, I, I, that's unfortunate, but you know, just, just be prepared. Maybe you can find, if you're really interested in that company, maybe you can find when the line's not quite as long and see if you can, you can get a one-on-one. -on -one. But just, you know, just be prepared, you know, try and give them the resume. A lot of times they'll say, go on our website, you know, fill it out. We're, we're just here to give you information. So kind of be prepared for that. Career fair is one way of looking for a job a very important way for some of you. But for some of you, it's not going to be as important. If you're a business major, how many business majors and engineering majors do we have in here? OK. All right, you all should come to career fair. Everybody else, come to career fair, but you're probably going to, as, as all of you will, there are going to be other ways you're going to do. You're going to look for a job. I was mentioning LinkedIn, um, you know, doing, you know, using networking. So depending on what you find at career fair, you may want to make an advising appointment and come in and let's follow up with, you know, don't, in other words, don't get discouraged if there aren't a lot of museums there. Come in and talk to, you know, who the advisor is for the cause for arts and science. I don't keep, mean to keep picking on you, but there are other ways to do that. So don't, as I said, if you don't find exactly what you're looking for, it's, this is one way of looking for a job. If you're an accounting major, and you want to work for the big four, it's the way. But that's, that's, that's the only, and maybe finance, that's, that's really the only one. The rest of you, this is one, this is one venue um, that I wouldn't, I wouldn't miss the opportunity. But you know, realize that there are other ways of looking for a job. These are the drop-in hours that I was talking about. Uh, we call them 15-minute resume drop-in hours, but usually if you need more time, Valerie? Valerie's one of our career assistants, and she does those drop-in hours. If they need more than 15 minutes, you usually give them more than 15 minutes. This is our mock interview events. So if you've gone through Career Services 101, or you have gone through the basic interviewing skills, our mock interview events are coming up. The all majors one is September 12th, and you should have received information about these. If not, when I send this to you, you'll see. So it's, it's really this week. So if you're interested in doing a mock interview, and this is not the mock interview with our, our trained senior students. This is where we bring employers from different companies to do interviews with you and then give you feedback. Okay? It's a very non-threatening way to get practice. But they'll be, you know, they'll be honest with you. And as I said, it's practice. So if you can practice with somebody who does this for a living you know, or interviews people all the time, I would urge you to do so. And you can sign up through Miami Career Link. These are the express 15-minute drop-in hours. Um, in Hoyt, these are the three days prior to <coughs> career fair. These are additional ones. So as you can see, we've got them in engineering, Farmer School of Business, Harrison, Office of Diversity Affairs, Phillips, Alumni Hall, and Center for Performing Arts. So we should be able to find one of these. And you can look on our website to find more.